Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Feast! <laughs> I'm YouTube famous now. This is my horror fan for when I'm feeling like a horror. Today, I'm feeling like a horror. So, um, I said feast, did you catch that? Instead of beast, because uh, last night I went to go see the movie Annabelle, the creation. <laughs> <laughs> with my husband and uh, my good Judy Melissa. It was so bad. But we ate so much shit at that movie, and I have been on a diet since August 1st, and I just did not care at all. The fan sucks from that side of the turnaround. Actually, I have to show you this. I just cleaned out this drawer in my kitchen where I keep, like, all... I literally have a bag of props now, you guys. Look. I mean, I have the horror fan. I have the fan that matches my eyes. <laughs> I have so uh, poopies just flying all up. Poopies just flying. Hold on. <clears throat> ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. <laughs> How's the drama? Drama phone. This is Peter speaking. How can I help you? <laughs> drama. It's, it's on sale right now. $7.99 annually. Mm -hmm. Drama 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Drama. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Elijah Daniel, I'm already on that. So anyway, here's my here's my bag of props right here, my drama props. Look, I even got the nail polish. Karina, in my opinion. So anyway, did you guys hear that Karina Kaboom was on, oh, I gotta get my fans that I want. Did you guys hear that Karina Kaboom was on Martin Lewis's You Now stream last night? So basically, Karina is trying to keep up with the rest of us, so she's you now and now, or she's saying if she gets seven or 8,000 fans, which you know she will, because everybody wants to see old Karina up in there. Not old Karina, I mean, Karina and I are probably close in the same age. I don't know, maybe she's 10 years younger than me. But anyway, um, Karina, you know, wants to do the you now thing because she wants to keep up with the kids. We're the kids, right? So for all of you kids out there that are coming to this video to watch for Elijah Daniel, no, this is not a Pokemon hat. This is actually an Ultra Music Festival hat, so get with the times. But anyway, um, let's get right, like, what props, what props, should, Pee Pee, what props, Pee Pee's right here. He's like, what props, Dad, what props? Um, what props should I use? I mean, when you have 15 fans... <laughs> That's about all I have left after this video. But anyway, what had happened was, I don't know really where to start this video. Sometimes like I wanna make a video, but like I don't really, like it's, it's a topic that I've kind of stayed away from. And I have to be really honest with you guys. <clears throat> Christine Sidelko, Sidelko and Elijah Daniel are a topic that I have kind of stayed away from for a while now. Like I'll make little passing commentary in videos, but like I have been like literally, literally, literally horror fan over Elijah Daniel. I have been a super uber fan over those two, especially Christine for quite some time. So um, let me kind of tell you what happened and then I'll tell you what happened last night. And if you know my gig and you watch my drama videos, drama, drama 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, yes, drama. I don't ever take a break. Never. Okay? So anyway, um, except for yesterday when I had to rant about all the Christmas uh, shit that was in the stores. But I, uh, well, okay, so I don't know when it was. It was probably about a year ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago, I think when I found Christine's videos and she was doing this rant like in her car. And then like I went and I watched another, and this was like, she wasn't doing stuff with Elijah at that time, I don't think. And I went and I watched like another video of hers and it was when she was talking about Jacob Sartorius and then she made all these comments and then like right after that, this is what I love when a YouTuber has been around for a while and you can go like binge watch. Do you guys do that? Like you find a new YouTuber. I found a new YouTuber that I'm going to be talking about this week and I am like laid in love with this girl. I cannot wait to talk about her. There's a squirrel up here and I know PP is about to lose his shit over it. Okay, PP. Don't. So anyway, um, I <laughs> I love when you find a YouTuber and you just become totally obsessed with them and you like watch all their videos, right? So anyway, that's what happened with Christine. But at the time, she only had like six or eight videos out, I think. And she did a follow-up video. The Jacob Sartorius video is hilarious. She's talking about basically like all of these young YouTubers that like want these girls to like send them pictures of themselves and I will be your girlfriend. And she's like saying all this stuff to them about like how like they tweet out like, I love you girl. And each of these girls think that they're directly saying it to them. It's hilarious because it's so true, right? And in a way, Christine, although she would never agree with this, she kind of started a little bit as a drama video. So anyway, that fan's getting on my nerves. And this fan's like a little, I feel like Belle up in the Gone with the Wind. It's a little bit too much. Scarlet. So anyway, <laughs> Ashley. But anyway, um, oh my God, did you guys see Colin Sutherland's newest video? 
Baby, she stays right up in there. It says right across there. I love you, Peter Mon, and she flips the fans. <laughs> I'm losing fans now. That's what usually happens when I upload a video is I start losing fans. But anyway, so I found Christine, and she does this whole video. Well, then all the comments on it were just a shit show from all these 12 and 14-year-old girls, right? Which is now basically the audience of Christine and Elijah. <laughs> Look at how time turns around. So anyway, PP, no, baby. We don't need to be talking like that. So anyway... So, um, I watched this follow-up video of hers, which is where she's sitting in front of a computer. Like, no shit's given, okay? This girl is so much like me. She sits down and she don't edit none of that stuff. I think it's hilarious, right? Well, now she does, because they always do all these vlog kind of things, and she's always wanting Domino's pizza. Me too, girl. Let's go get a good Domino's pizza. But anyway, so, um, she does this follow-up video to the Jacob Sartorius thing, where she's sitting there, and she's, like, uh, talking about, like, all these comments that she got, right? And she lets these children have okay I mean it's kind of a little bit like and she even says in there I'm calling these like 12 year old girls bad names and I shouldn't do that and it's kind of a little bit too much but like it is so funny it is such a shit show that you can't like not watch it right so I instantly became like this uber fan of Christine well the next couple videos that she put out she started doing these rant videos and I don't know who is in the background I think it was like a girl but she starts doing, she says she's going to sip the tea. See, I told you, Christine started as a drama channel, even though she don't, I'm sure she doesn't admit to that or own that today. Why would you? Nobody wants to be a drama channel except for me. And I own it all day long. So anyway, so she doesn't like do shots. She's not drinking tea. She has these little teacups. She does like shots of like, like, what's that? I don't drink. I don't know. I ain't got my glasses on. I can't do math. But she does like shots of like, uh, what's that called? That uh, everybody drinks, that all the college kids and high school kids drink at the fire stuff. You know, the stuff that, ugh, stuff. Okay, so anyway, she's doing like shots of that. And uh, so then she goes and does all these. Well, all of a sudden, like I, she's doing these car vlogs in her car. And then the next thing I know, she's got her good Judy Elijah with her in all these videos. And I'm like, well, who's this cute guy, right? And I mean, listen, right from the get-go, I just thought he was gay. I mean, he didn't say, I didn't know, but whatever. And I like Googled it at one time, is Elijah Daniel gay? And all these people are like speculating on there. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Who'd care anyway? But I just wondered. I thought he was a cute dude, right? And um, he's very kind of like... If you have a type, like, Elijah's kind of a little bit of the type that I go for. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I'm sure he's sitting there going, oh, my God. Because n now we find out that he and Tana Mojo think anybody over 30 is old. <laughs> so I'm sure they think I'm total grandpa. And I don't really give a rat's ass about it. So anyway, I'm watching all this kind of stuff. And Elijah and Christine. Now, Elijah's in, like, every video. And he's like, Christine, do this. Christine, do that. Christine. And it seems so forced. So I'm watching and I keep on watching and it's like the one with the, you know, like, okay, the best one is the, my favorite with them together is the one where she finds the dildo because it very much is led by Christine. But over time, what's kind of happened is that like Elijah has taken the driver's seat of the duo. And I don't like, I asked this last night in my you now stream because I thought if I'm the only one that sees this, then I'm not going to talk about it because maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just like my favoritism towards Christine as a comedian. I think she's hilarious. So that was that, and I love that video, but then there were like other videos, and it just very much seemed to me like they were very, very led by Elijah. Now, I knew nothing about Elijah, so I did a little bit of research on Wikipedia. I mean, listen, I love the Google, and I love the Wikipedia, okay? I need me in my own Wikipedia page, and I'm sure it'll say Peter Mon asshole right underneath it. But anyway, so I found out that like he had gotten banned by Trump on, he, I had, okay, actually I watched recently um, an interview that he did with Johnny McGovern um, on Hey Queen, and he was talking about, and I knew this before that, but he had gotten like banned by Trump on like, or blocked by Trump on Twitter because he had made this like pornographic, like five or 10 page like novel that he sold on Amazon about Trump and Bernie Sanders. I mean, that is kind of really fucking creati creative and clever, isn't it? I mean, I think so. And just this last week, I think he was, uh, fa he got <laughs> made the, uh, what was it? The mayor of hell, Michigan. And then he said that heterosexuality was, um, I don't know, like illegal. And then he got impeached. And the whole thing, of course, obviously was just raw, you know, funny, funny, ha ha. So anyway, um, last night I had noticed that he had been tweeting this stuff out about, uh, uh, that he was going to put a squad together, right? Well, here's my deal, okay? Now, I love Christine and Elijah, but if you've been watching recently, like, Elijah's in all these people's collabs, 
and he's in the background of like Tana's videos and all this kind of stuff. But like Christine's kind of been doing her own thing and I've been kind of like, where's Christine? Like what's going on with Christine, right? And every time Christine is there, she's like holding on to that pop pin so close. I mean, she's like this at all given time. Have you noticed that? Like in every video she's in, she's got that like pop pin in her hand. I mean, she can't wait to hit the dab, right? Which I'm like, whatever. But like slowly over time, what it became to me was that their videos just became very funny for like, like it reminded me of high school. Like when I was smoking so much pot with my friends, my good GDs and all that kind of stuff. But like if you weren't in on the joke and you weren't smoking pot, then you just didn't get it. It's like they're catering to a certain audience, but that audience is really like 20 and below, right? So, I mean, they're bigger than that. And I know that chain smokers, listen, baby, I know the whole gig now. I Listen, I know, I've been keeping up because I love them. So anyway, I think they're funny. But what I don't understand is why we need to mention, and people come for me and say, this is because you're a recovering at, no baby, do your thing. Now I'm a whore, I'm not a white whore. Do your thing, baby. I mean, like if you need to talk about smoking weed, talk about smoking weed. I mean, it doesn't have to be in every video, okay? I don't care, I don't give a rat's ass what y'all do. But when it starts becoming your message, then it becomes a problem, right? Now, a lot of people on here know that I consider myself the Janice Joplin of YouTube. And last night I was driving around listening to a little Janice. Summertime and the living. I was also listening to Gabby's new song. <gasps> Have you heard her new song? Oh my, the Gabby show. <gasps> no, ma'am, that song does not play. So anyway, it is so cute. Go check it out. But anyway, um, so you know what? Even like Janice, who was very like, her music was very controlled by her usage and she ended her life over her usage, obviously. I mean, even her, like it wasn't everything about her, right? Her creativity was not focused around that. And I think that should be a message to this new generation, you know? It's like, don't burn out in a frenzy of creativity, okay? Like Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Amy Winehouse, Kurt Cobain. These people that were so consumed with use, okay, that it affected their life overall. And I think it's a really sad commentary. And you know, today, celebrities, YouTubers are the modern day celebrity. They just are, okay? You know, Elijah and Christine have their finger on the pulse and Tana and James Charles and all these people who we're gonna talk about in a second, have their finger on the pulse of like everything that is going on pop culture wise. And let me show you how. So last night I was looking um, on Twitter and I just happened to run over this tweet by Elijah Daniel that said, we're all just fucked up in our hotel talking about how great our moms are. I love how wholesome this is. And it's all very tongue in cheek. And every time I make one of these videos, people are like, oh, it's all meant to be funny. No, they talk about it all the time. Like they talk about getting fucked up all the time. It's a pretty big part of what they do. And they make it a message in almost all of their videos and other people's videos. It's a pretty big, like, go watch these people's videos. If you watch them, you'll hear the same message that I do. So anyway, then I went over and I was like streaming through and I saw that Perez Hilton had written an article and I was like, hold on, I need this one for Perez Hilton. Perez wrote an article about Elijah Daniel. What? Now, Elijah Daniel's doing well. I mean, he's popular, but Perez Hilton, Perez Hilton talks about like Kim Kardashian and the breakdown of Tara Reid and you know, all these fools that nobody care about. I mean, but everybody cares about, right? So anyway, nobody should care about, but everybody does. So I go up here and I read this article and here it is. Oh, hold on a second. Here it is on, um, oh, did you seriously do this to me? I mean, he is cute, isn't he? I mean, I think Elijah Daniel is so hot, but sometimes I think he looks like he kind of needs to maybe take a shower or something. But anyway, so here he is, and it says, get ready underneath him. You know, Perez always says that. And it says, YouTube star Elijah Daniel is launching his own collective called The Pack. Deets here. Um, so let's get right into this, and we should read all about what Perez Hilton had to say. So this article comes straight from Perez Hilton. Attention, YouTube fans. On Wednesday, comedian Elijah Daniel, who famously became the official mayor of Hell, Michigan, Announced on Twitter, he is launching his own collective network of influencers called The Pack. And then he put up, uh, this is a tweet that Elijah put up. Fuck Team 10, The Pack is launching next week. A collective of good people working, to, good people working together to create good things. Members announced soon, smiley face. Uh, Daniel told Trending All Day, we are launching a powerhouse group of talented individuals from all fields who want to help each other grow, not only as creators, but as people. Unlike Team 10, I don't want a collective fueled by fake drama and money. I want a group fueled, fueled, fueled by creative, Freudian slip, fueled by creativity. We will be all working closely together to make our content as creative and as fun as possible. 
Elijah also plans to produce projects outside of the YouTube realm. This is so much more than YouTube. This isn't even our focus. We are working on so many pro uh, projects and I'm, I'm telling you should, I'm not telling you shit about them until we're ready. Confirmed members include best friend Christine Sidel Sidelko uh, via a deleted tweet, Tana Mojo, Karina Koff, who I've talked about those two forever, and comedian Chris Clemens. Those rumored include Lena the Plug, Nathan Zed, Sarah Baska, James Charles, Trevor Moran, and Zayn Hijazi. Why am I not on that list? Y'all need some sober grandpa up on that list to like, go listen, children, listen, okay? Now, I'll get you the hotel room, I'll play chaperone outside the door, and y'all get creative, okay? Seriously. So that y'all don't burn out in a frenzy of creativity, because that's what's going to happen. I mean, seriously, people don't think that this shit's going to catch up with them, but sooner or later it is. And I'm like thinking to myself as I'm looking at all this, okay? You have somebody like Christine that is absolutely fucking hilarious, okay? I mean... She's that friend you want with you at any given time. And this is why their duo works so well. Because I think that Elijah is very much like the friend. And Christine's like the friend you always have with you. That's like every, I have a friend like this, my good Judy Heather in Las Vegas. Hey, Heather, how are you? I mean, when she is with you, it is like nonstop laughter. I mean, she's so funny, right? Um, so like Elijah's like the friend and like Christine's like the humor. And so they work together perfectly. But Elijah is, like, super, super creative. I mean, like, and he really, I mean, he's kind of like the Michael Moore of 2017. A little, I mean, like, when I was reading all this stuff last night, I thought, he kind of reminds me of Michael Moore. If you don't know who Michael Moore is, he's a director that did things like Bowling for Columbine. He talked about, like, the issue with the factories closing in, you know, uh, Michigan and all that kind of stuff. And Elijah's very similar to that. Like, he's very much you know, the one talking about all of these things that are going on, but like in a very humorous, but kind of intellectual way. So what bothers me about this is that the reach could be so much further. The reach could be 30 and 40 year olds. And I mean, maybe they just want the reach to be 25 and under, but why would you, if you could be so much bigger than that, right? If you wanted to have reality shows and books and music and all, why would you not want your reach to be huge? Because they're so creative together that I think that this whole message they're constantly sending out that we're fucked up sitting around this hotel room. That don't sound like no fun to me, okay? I'm sorry, but baby, when I got sober, there was no giggle left in the bottle. And I'm just saying, a spade, it, calling a spade a spade, right, baby? If, I'm just, I don't wanna sit around in no hotel room with a bunch of people getting fucked up. That don't sound like no fun to me. If I was sitting up in Las Vegas, I'd be like, baby, I'm going to hit the slots or the buffet or something, baby, no way. Have you ever sat in a hotel room with a bunch of people sitting around getting fucked up all between the ages of 18 and 25? No, man, that's not fun. Uh-uh. But I think the bigger thing is, who are you reaching? Because, like, we're seeing this right now with Tyler Oakley. Tyler Oakley's audience is aging out. So I don't care what kind of Team 20, Team 30, Team 50, Team 69 you put out, baby. One of these days, that's going to age out, okay? 29-year-olds that are getting, like, degrees and moving and getting engaged, and they're looking at bridezillas and DIYs of, like, you know, how to do their backyard patio and all that shit like me, <laughs> they're not wanting to like sit there and watch a bunch of yahoos walking around getting high. They don't care. That ain't funny to them no more, right? Because they've lived it and they've done it and it's like, okay, what's next? So I don't know. I think they have a huge opportunity ahead of them, but I think that they need to tone in and put their message out there, you know, or put their message together. And I remember back in the day, I had this really good friend of mine that was a vision consul uh, visionary consultant and, I and he was very, very successful. And he really helped somebody that had a horrible image. Like his image is like completely corrected at this point. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, like what's the one thing that you always say? And, I always, and he said, I always tell people that when they're presenting themselves and they're putting themselves up the, out there into the public to be very, very careful of the overall message that they're sending. Because are they sending, you know, this message? Are they sending that message? But what's the message, okay? So I think Elijah, you need to ask yourself while you're putting a squad together, What's the message that you're putting together? Creativity, comic relief, or getting fucked up? Because a majority of what you put out there is getting fucked up. And I really don't think that's the message that you want to send. I think that if that's part of what you send out there and you show that as responsible adults, y'all can party, I think that's fine, right? But be careful of who your audience is because a lot of your audience is 12, 13, 14, and 15 year olds. The same people that Christine was criticizing when she started her channel you know, two years ago or whatever, are now the people that love you and look up to you. So, I mean, we've come full circle. What's the message that you're sending out to them? 
And I think you gotta be really, really careful about what you're putting out there into the world. I think that these two have the ability to just like take over the world. I mean, I don't even just see reality TV shows for them. I see like, I mean, they had, they were putting a television show together. I don't know what's gonna happen from that, but you know, and I think the fact that, you know, a lot, they could do so much positive out there, especially with that team of, did you see the team of people that they have out there? I mean, that's like between the, all of them, they have like 10 or 20 million subscribers. Imagine what they could do with that. No, oh, man, I don't know, not even like, I don't know, a 16th of that or a 69th of that. So anyway, I wish them the best. I hope they think about the message that they're sending out there into the world because I think it's a very delicate situation. I love you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.